Hello and welcome to today's Delta Credit Tip. So you're about to enter negotiations with that debt collector and you're not quite sure you've got all the information you need going into this conversation. Well, here are five things that debt collectors are not likely to tell you unless you ask right here on today's Delta Credit Tip. Hello and welcome back to today's Delta Credit Tip. So you found yourself in a position where you're going to have to negotiate a debt with a debt collector. Either they've proven the debt's yours, uh, you got to get it done for a security clearance, the lender won't get you the loan without getting it rid of, whatever the case may be, now you're going to have to negotiate this debt. And you're not quite sure you've got quite all the information, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go through, we're going to tell you five things that you're going to want to bring up with this debt collector before you start negotiating, okay? Hopefully this information is gonna be very helpful to you. If so, don't forget, give us those thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell, because every Thursday, we're gonna be coming out with new information that's gonna be helpful for you and your credit restoration process, and you wanna get it as soon as it comes out so you're armed as quickly as possible, right? Of course, if you know someone else is going through this process, share the information. That's the whole point of the YouTube channel so that we can empower ourselves with information and know-how so we can go in here and accomplish the goal that we seek. All right, so let's start talking about some of the things that you wanna kind of yank out from the debt collector as you go into this process. The first is you've got to really ascertain is that entity that's collecting from you legally collecting it, All right? And that has to do with typically registration. In all of about, then about 15 states, there is either a licensing requirement or a registration requirement for debt collectors, okay? If they haven't registered or they're not licensed in that state, they can't collect on it, regardless if you actually owe the money or not, okay? Now, there are two caveats to this, okay? Uh, the first caveat is, is it an attorney, okay? The attorneys... Don't have to follow that rule. Second, okay, if let's say you are in the state of Florida uh, now, but you were in the state of Kentucky. Well, a Kentucky debt collector can collect a debt that originated in Kentucky in Florida or any state for that matter. Okay, so if the debt was created in a different state, as long as they have met that state's requirements, they can then go to other states and collect from you if you happen to be traveling, okay? So the whole state requirement of licensing and all that stuff won't apply if the state that you happen to be in at that time requires it, but the state that you were in when you created the debt does not require it, okay? It may require it in that state. They may have to re, you know, license in that state that the debt originated from, but not the state that you're in now, okay? So again, attorneys, don't matter and if you're moving around then you need to check with the original state second thing you want to look for or solicit out from them is do they have the right to collect the amount that they're trying to collect okay the fair debt collection practices act clearly states that a debt collector is not allowed to charge interest or fees in the course of their collecting that debt unless that was originally stated in the contract that you signed with that merchant or lending company or whomever it was before they got the debt, okay? So that $3.95 fee because you want to use a debit card instead of an ACH or that debt that charged off at $1,200 and now they're trying to charge you $1,350 for interest and fees, all that stuff doesn't fly. Again, caveat being an attorney. An attorney can do that regardless. Okay, so you want to make sure that if they are trying to collect extra money, right, that they have, you've talked about, hey, what does the original contract say? And really, you want to get that in writing. Yeah, you don't want to take their word for it, obviously. And this is not something that they're going to freely tell you up front, right? Remember, it's legal if you allow it, so don't allow it, all right? Number three, the other thing that you really want to um, bring up is the ownership of the debt. Okay, you want to find out, is this debt assigned 
to this debt collection company or is this debt owned by the debt collection company? Now, if you've done a validation of debt, you would have, you should already know some of this stuff because uh, they should have disclosed it to you. But if for whatever reason, this is something that you didn't find out, it kind of makes a difference in your negotiation. Okay. Because let's say you can't get to a point where you agree, right? Either a deletion clause or the amount that you're going to pay or, uh, or whatever the case may be. If that debt was assigned, we'll recognize that that assignment contract is going to eventually come to an end and it's going to go back to the original creditor or merchant. So they only have but so much time to negotiate this out before they lose that contract and that could add a little bit of pressure. So you don't necessarily have to give in to their demands if they only have a very limited amount of time <clears throat> that they are assigned that debt. Now, if they own it, they, you know, they make their own rules. Everything at that point is company policy. And so it's going to be now mano a mano <clears throat> between you and that debt collection company. All right. Let's move on to number four. And that is, um, do you legally owe the money? Okay. Statutes of limitations do apply. Debt collectors should warn you that you are not legally responsible for a debt, but sometimes it doesn't happen, right? So that's something that you can just strictly ask that debt collector. Hey, is this debt beyond my state's statute of limitations as to how long I legally owe the debt, okay? Or how long I can legally be sued for the debt. If they answer in the affirmative, well, then you know that you don't legally owe the money. So if you're trying to negotiate to say a settlement amount, you're not going to pay 90 cents on the dollar if they if you don't legally owe it. Really, you're just paying them to delete it at that point, right? You're not trying to settle anything because you don't owe them anything. What you're trying to do is get it off your credit report. That's the focus of the conversation. And so you've got to figure out, well, how much is that worth to you? not how much is that debt worth to them, all right? So make sure that you understand, is the debt bought or is the debt assigned? Now, the last thing I wanna bring up, the fifth thing, it kind of piggybacks on whether or not they legally owe the money or not. A lot of times what a debt collector will do is if you're trying to negotiate a debt, they'll play the boss man card, right? The boss man card is, oh, I'd love to settle for 25 cents on the dollar, but my client, the hospital you didn't pay, they won't let me go below 90%, right? Oh, I can't negotiate that. I'd love to help you, but I can't. My, my hands are tied. Or, oh, I can't delete this from your credit report because my client, the credit card company, won't allow me to do that, okay? Well, here's the thing about that contract. Usually those contracts are not allowed to be discussed. These are business contracts, sometimes multi-million dollar contracts. Do you really want that guy who's being paid $10 an hour to answer the phone to start making decisions on a multi-million dollar account? Probably not. Can they discuss it freely with the general public? Of course not. They're not going to tell you the rules and regulations bound by the agreement that they have with their original client if that debt was assigned, right? If the debt was bought, well, then whatever profit they get is part of their business model. But if that debt is assigned, you know, there may be parameters set by the original creditors. Are they going to be at liberty to discuss it with you? Probably not. It's probably just an excuse. So you may want to Go ahead and disconnect, try again later, try a different technique, okay? So that's really not something that they're not gonna tell you. That's more like something that they're gonna try to tell you and get you to believe so that they can get their way. Make sense? So these debt collectors, they're smooth, they're slick, they understand how to negotiate a, con uh, a conversation in their favor, but just kind of remember these things, kind of bring these up again, remember, are they licensed? Are they registered in the state like they should be? Or does that state even require it? Um, also, are they allowed to charge the interest or fees? If they've done that, what is the original amount that charged off? What is the amount that they're trying to charge you now? Are they equal? You know, um, then of course, number three, do they own the debt? Has it been assigned? Right? Number four, do you still legally owe the money? And lastly, 
um, are they bound really by this contract on how they negotiate the debt, right? That's just something that they're going to throw out there and it's just kind of an obstacle, right? So hopefully this information will help. Just kind of arm yourself as you're going in there so you can be cognizant of some of the weird things that might be going on behind the scenes. If it's helpful, give us that thumbs up. Don't forget, subscribe and hit the bell so that every Thursday you come out, uh, we come out with this information, you get it. Uh, but most importantly, share the information, right? There's oodles and oodles of people out there with the same problem that you're having right now. Let them get informed. Let them understand what's going on so they can make a choice to make a change. Delta.